Hi, I'm Dr. Rebecca Terry, and for the past 29 years, I've been involved in the practice of obstetrics and gynecology. Recently, my practice has been limited to gynecology only, and I've had a special interest in osteoporosis evaluation and treatment. I've been certified by the International Society of Clinical Densitometry to read and evaluate dexagrams for low bone mass and osteoporosis. My practice also includes an emphasis in minimally invasive surgery and menopausal evaluation and management. What could I do for my bone health? Bone health crosses all age groups, including puberty and adolescence through menopause and beyond, because nutrition and lifestyle are primary contributors to building up our maximum bone density. Poor nutrition in adolescence, including anorexia and inactive lifestyle, low intake of dietary calcium or dietary supplementations of calcium, and cigarette smoking keep young girls from reaching their peak bone mass. This is usually achieved at age 19. Moderate alcohol use of three or more glasses daily is associated with osteoporosis. Weight-bearing exercise for at least 30 minutes daily and an adequate calcium intake of perhaps three servings of dairy products daily and an adequate vitamin D intake of 1,000 to 2,000 international units daily help prevent bone loss and preserve bone density. My ovaries were removed. I'm not taking hormone replacement. Should I be concerned about my bone health? Loss of estrogen rapidly causes a decrease in bone density. In the first two years of menopause with estrogen loss, bone density decreases by up to 30%. Hormone replacement therapy or estrogen therapy alone decrease hip and vertebral fractures by 33 to 36%. In fact, estrogen therapy is approved for osteoporosis prevention and fracture reduction. What is osteopenia? Who is at risk? And how is it treated? Osteopenia, or low bone mass seen on a dexagram, is a reduction in bone mass below the normal range, but yet not low enough to be in the range of osteoporosis. This is defined by the World Health Organization as being minus one standard deviation below that of a 30-year-old and minus one to up to minus 2.5 standard deviations. This equates to about 10 to 25% below the normal value found in a 30-year-old woman. Below 25%, the diagnosis of osteoporosis kicks in. The World Health Organization recommends patients with osteopenia be further evaluated using various clinical risk factors regarding the need for intervention and therapy via medication to prevent any fracturing. Anyone at risk for osteoporosis is also at risk for osteopenia. What is osteoporosis and who is at risk? Osteoporosis is a skeletal disorder that is characterized by a loss of bone mass, a deterioration of bone microarchitecture, and a decline in bone quality, which leads to an increased vulnerability to bone fractures. Osteoporosis has a five-fold greater prevalence in women than men. There is also a wide variation in hip and fracture rates in women based on race and ethnicity. In the United States, Caucasian women have the highest rate of hip fracture, while African American women have the lowest rate. Mexican American women fall in between these two groups. Although Asian women often have bone density measurements lower than Caucasian women, interestingly enough, they have fewer vertebral and hip fractures than Caucasians. What are the symptoms of osteoporosis and how is it treated? Osteoporosis has been called the silent epidemic. This is because there is no pain associated with it and no outwardly visible sign. Bone mass and quality decrease and a fracture occurs often without any warning symptoms. Before osteoporosis treatment is started, secondary causes for osteoporosis besides aging are excluded by blood testing and evaluation of medical problems or any medications that can cause bone loss. There are many treatment options for osteoporosis, including the largest category of drugs called the bisphosphonates. These include the brand names of Fosamax, Actinel, Boniva, and Reclass, along with others. These are given either orally or IV. Oftentimes, at least a three to 5% increase in bone density is seen after two years of therapy. Another category is the partial estrogen agonist or antagonist. This includes Avista. These drugs mimic the action of estrogen on bone and improve bone mass. 
Another drug used more recently on the market is Prolia. It is given as an injection under the skin every six months and helps to prevent the formation of the small cells that actually break down our bones to release calcium into the blood. Forteo is a medication also that is given. It is an injection under the skin daily for two years in patients who have a failure to respond to the categories of drugs I've listed above. It is often used in patients who have had skeletal fractures because it tends to act more rapidly to improve bone density. It cannot be used in patients with a history of extensive irradiation to the bone for cancer or other conditions. The final therapeutic intervention most commonly used is estrogen. Estrogen is important as it prevents bone loss from occurring in the first place and helps to prevent any further bone loss and further reducing fracture risk.